fellow readers. My name is Christina Juarez, and I wanted to talk to you and read a little excerpt um, about my book. It's a memoir about my husband and I's journey, um, getting him back to America as a legal permanent resident. And the memoir is called Devastated Families. It's a true story about the power of love, immigration, and government. I also wanted to mention that we have a Spanish version. It's called Familias Devastadas. Um, it is available on my website, devastatedfamilies.com. You can get it on Amazon in English or Spanish, walmart.com, and you can also go to the publishing website, pennantpublications.com. And now for the reading. April 24th, 2018. Another sleepless night. We were up all night with our minds racing and our hearts thumping. We rose quite early and got ready. We played our favorite songs while we showered. Jesus got all dressed up and looked really nice. His file folder contained all the required documents, photos, and more, and was put in order and ready to go. We went downstairs to the hotel lobby for some coffee and breakfast, but we couldn't eat very much. That day was going to determine where our lives would be led. The interview, immigration officer, and government facility had our future in their hands. After waiting all this time and doing everything right, the moment was here, and we were scared. We sat outside for a little bit, talked, hugged, prayed, kissed, and double-checked that he had everything he needed for the interview, and that he didn't have his cell phone because they weren't allowed. It was time. I watched my husband walk up the steps to cross the pedestrian bridge and get in line in the consulate office. He looked back at me across the road, waved, blew me kisses, and made a heart shape with his hands like we always do when we part company. Into the building he went, and I started bawling. My body was shaking because I just wanted my baby to be approved and back in my arms again. I walked back into the hotel room and tried to watch some TV, but I couldn't. I sat in the window sill and waited. I then texted my mom and she told me that everything was going to be all right. She had lots of people praying for us. I texted Jesus even though his phone was on the nightstand behind me. I cried a lot more and I prayed. I then tried to sleep, but there was no way that I could. My mind wouldn't stop. I got out of bed, then sent Jesus memes about love and being my husband. After about two hours, I went outside to wait and see him. It was too freaking hot, and I couldn't see as well as I wanted to from our hotel room. So I went back up to our room and noticed a window right outside our hotel room door. And it had a perfect view of people both coming in and going out of the consulate. I played our favorite songs while I waited. I also sang them from time to time with all my heart. I missed him so much. I hoped that he was okay and that he had the strength and courage to get through the questions. Maids were going into and out of rooms behind me. It had now been three hours. What was going on? Why was it taking so long? Every time the door opened across the street at the consulate office, I got hopeful, thinking that it was him. I got up, only to find it wasn't. I saw some people hugging each other, jumping up and down, but others were crying or alone. My heart pounded as I sweated through my clothes. I jumped to my feet faster than a frog catches a fly. I started running down the stairs, not caring who was in my way. I threw the hotel door open to find myself in 100-degree weather. Nothing was going to stop me. I saw him across the street, and he started jogging, even though he was all dressed up in nice clothes and dress shoes. It had been four hours since we'd seen each other. I ran up the stairs, skipping steps in order to get to him on the pedestrian bridge. I'm smiling, crying, so much adrenaline. I could hardly contain myself. I looked at him, and he put his hand up to tell me to stop. People were everywhere, and I was wondering why he was telling me to stop. Didn't he know how excited I was to see him? Then he started shaking his head. My heart was screaming. What do you mean, no? How? He knew exactly what I was feeling, and he held me right away as I almost passed out. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, baby, he cried to me. My body came to a complete halt. I went into shock right away with the word denied running through my head. I became hysterical as he had to help me get back to our hotel room. How could this have been? He was a good man. 
Why was this happening? Oh my God. We went inside the hotel room and we both started screaming at the top of our lungs, crying hysterically, pounding our fists on the bed and on the walls. Why? After a while, when we thought that all the tears had run out, we started crying again. My mom was texting me, but I didn't respond. I just couldn't. She called Jesus and he explained the best that he could what happened. And she couldn't believe it either. He then called his mom and she said that she was going to come right away to stay with us in Juarez so we could have the support to figure out what we were going to do next. I couldn't believe it had come to that in order for me to meet his mother. Wow. Of course we didn't sleep that night either. The next day, his mother arrived and we got Jesus' cousins to drive us to the airport to get her since they lived close to our hotel. As soon as his mother arrived, I hugged her so tight because even though we spoke different languages, this was one of those things which we both can understand and feel. I was so happy to finally meet her. I just wished it was under different circumstances. I spent the whole day crying. She would rub my arm or grab my hand because she knew how much I loved her son and how painful all this was. I tried so hard to fake being happy around his family, but I'm not that type of person. I am very sentimental and full of emotions. I felt bad that I had to meet his family this way, but thankfully, they understood and were very supportive of us. We hung out with Jesus' cousins again today. All of us went to the mall and walked around. We got some food, but by that point, I was not eating much. My depression and anxiety had fully settled in. I met more family and cried some more. We had continued to stay in the hotel until Friday the 27th because in Mexico you pay for the hotels up front for as long as you tell them and that was the day I had previously guessed that we'd be going home. We decided that Jesus was going to have to live with his parents in Mazatlan while we waited to get him back home. With all this new information I took another week off work because I needed to be able to see where my husband was living and explore Mazatlan with him to prepare my mind while we were apart. We booked a flight right away to Culiacan and then we were going to take a bus to Mazatlan, where there, from there because it was the most cost-effective method. April 26, 2018. We were really done with Juarez. We didn't want to be there anymore. We walked around the mall some more, ate, continued to visit with his family just to keep our minds occupied. Today, we also told his work that he wasn't coming back, and his boss understood our situation. We also set up a meeting for when I got back to proceed with the lawyer, whom I had first consulted with. More tears were shed. At first, I thought I was going to be able to stay with him and still get paid as I was salary, so I let the substitute and my boss know about my plans. I prepared my family and my ex-husband, the father of my two children, about my plans for staying longer than expected. My ex then proceeded to threaten me with court papers and on abandonment of our children. Talk about adding salt to a wound. Where was the empathy and compassion for the situation which we had just been thrown into? None of this, none of this was chosen for us. None of us chose for this to happen. None of us wanted this to happen. My mom and sister were able to reassure him that abandonment was never on my radar and they helped support him with the kids as we were all still in school and had extracurricular activities to attend. Come to find out, I didn't even have enough time to add up to what I needed in order to get paid for the remaining 20-something days of school. So Human Resources said that if I wanted to continue to get paid and have medical benefits, then I was going to need to be back to work by Monday, May 7th. That information came as a punch to the gut. I cried even more, and so did Jesus. My time with him was going to end, and it was coming fast. I couldn't imagine my life without him. It hurt so bad to know that I was going back home and that he wouldn't be coming with me. We arranged for a taxi to take us to the airport the next morning since it was going to be an early flight. We didn't want to burden his cousins with this again. And again, we didn't get much sleep. That's it for now, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the little bit that I did read. And I hope that you go and find the book and understand and share the experiences and hardships we had to endure through this very troublesome time and how our love had to get us through all of that. And our family, all the immigration lawyers and fees and paperwork, 
and the battles with the government. It was a long journey, and I know many, many people are going through it, and not everybody knows how hard it is. So please, find out what just one person's story is, and maybe that'll help you understand what millions of people are going through. Go ahead and email me at devastatedfamilies at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your stories of the immigration process. I'd love to answer questions the best that I can about my experience. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Thank you.